This is my first ever scratch build design. It's pretty ugly, with visible duct tape doing half the engineering work and excessive hot glue doing the other half. Although most of it was eyeball together, I did iterate through a few parts till I got something that worked, like the landing carriage and the nose piece, which was designed to be printed out of clear plastic so I could tuck a light inside and fly it in the dark. Surprisingly, this patchwork of a machine didn't just leave the ground, it flew better than I expected. The large wing size and high angles kept this three-channel aircraft pretty slow and pretty stable, and I was able to design the landing carriage to a point where it could forgive some pretty awful landings. I enjoyed messing around with it enough that I figured I'd share the project files and how it all came together. The body of the aircraft was made of two foam boards, and I started by cutting them in half. I then took one of the halves, turned it around, and cut it in half again to make a quarter piece. I then took the two halves, placed them back together, and taped it down the center line to hold it in place. The idea by cutting the board in half is so I can pull the wings up, introducing some wing dihedral, which is supposed to increase the lateral stability, making the aircraft return to level naturally. For a three-channel aircraft, I was aiming to be on the higher end for our wing angle. Eyeballing it, I figured the width of a duct tape roll placed on either end of our wingtips looked about right, and calculating it after the fact, I think our eyeballs did okay, at around 7 degrees. To hold that angle in place, I'll apply an excessive amount of hot glue down the center line, and let that set. Going back to our quarter pieces, I'll line them up side by side, and tape them back together. I'll then glue that down to the front to add some weight near the nose, and thicken up the aircraft a bit to be a little more durable. I then trimmed the leading edge of the wing at an angle, and sanded it even. To then make the leading edge smooth, and so I don't tear the styrofoam when changing out lights or some dowel rods I might add later, I'll tape down the front about a duct tape's width of tape all along the edge. To install our connector plate, I'll eyeball it straight and level, and then give a firm press to indent the edges. I'll then take my blade and score the edges so that the plate sits flat in place. Once the plate is in place, I'll drill out my M3 bolt holes. I'll go ahead and print off the nose piece, and while it's outside the aircraft, I'll go ahead and install the motor now. I'm using a Surpass 1120 kV motor, but any motor with a similar mounting bracket will fit. I'll also add a little dab of hot glue, since if I didn't tighten the M3 bolt down tight enough, I don't want it to shake loose. Speaking of M3 bolts, I'll use M3 bolts to connect our connector plate to our nose. I'll then cut out the pocket to hold our electronics and battery, being careful not to cut the motor wires. Flipping it around to the back, I like to take a piece of scrap styrofoam and glue it to the body and the nose to act as a brace so in the event of a hard landing, the frame doesn't bend at the edge of the nose. And while we're at the back, I'll go ahead and install the tail wheel by assembling it. I'll add some super glue to the end piece so that the wheel doesn't slide off. And then finally, I'll glue it onto the back, trying to keep it as straight as possible. For our control surfaces, I'll cut them out of styrofoam, starting with the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator. 
For the elevator, I'll mark it out and then cut it off. This will let me bevel the edge so that once it's taped back on, it'll be free to move up and down. Similarly, for the rudder, I'll go ahead and mark it out, cut it as well, and then bevel the edge so I can tape it back together and allow it to rotate freely. After adding the control horn, I realized that it was a little bit thinner than I'd like it to be, so I just glued on some extra pieces to both sides to thicken it up a bit. Drawing a center line on our horizontal stabilizer, I'll line up the rudder before finally gluing it down. I'll then connect our servo motors and glue them down as well, completing our control surfaces. Since I want to fly it in the dark, I like to add three different colored lights. One color on the right side, one color on the left side, and a color going down the back along the center line. Even though it's probably not a great idea to tape them directly onto the leading edge of our airfoil, I'm not here for efficiency. I'm just trying to see if my wings are level when I'm coming into land at night. For our landing carriage, I'll assemble it similarly to the tail wheel, where I'll add super glue onto our end caps so that the wheels don't slide off. The landing carriage will line up with the holes in the nose, and if you want, you could use M3 bolts to install them. I actually like to use skewer sticks so that if I crash the thing, the carriage will shear off, absorbing some of the blow. Lastly, all that's left to do is to wire up our electronics, stuffing everything into the nose and taping the wires down. The nose is just wide enough to hold a 3S short LiPo pack snugly, but you could add some tape to the sides of the LiPo to make it fit a bit more snug and not fall out. I also like to add some dowel rods to the side to bring the CG up a tad, and I've also found they've saved my propellers in the past, hitting the ground first in a nosedive. For the propeller, I'm using a 1060 prop. Taking it outside, here's a look at what the aircraft looks like at nighttime. But before the maiden voyage, I checked the controls and realized that my rudder was moving in the wrong direction. So I had to take a moment to go find the setting to reverse the rudder. Now when I turn it to the right, it moves to the right, and vice versa to the left. I also realized while inspecting the rudder that it was a little off the center line we originally drew. Not having my screwdriver handy to adjust the control horns, I just used the trim on the transmitter to move the rudder over a little bit and bring it back to center. Now that the controls are looking good, it's time to see if this taped together foam board can actually take flight. And then all of its hot glue string glory, it seemed to lift off no problem and actually flew pretty stable with the wing dihedral returning it to center when the controls are neutral. What I like about the color pattern and placing the lights on the front edge of the wing is that when it comes into land, it's really easy to tell what the wings are doing and if they are level. And when it comes to turning, the color pattern also means it's easy to tell which side is currently banking. And despite the excessive amounts of hot glue and duct tape, there was still plenty of power to fly with the nose high and slow, performing some tight turns. In total, I'd say I got around 10 to 12 minutes of flight time with my 2.2 amp hour 3S short lipos. And so with two of them, I got to spend around 20 to 25 minutes of flight time testing out the build for the first time. With all that said, I certainly had fun testing this out, which despite how ugly it looked, it was still a pleasure to fly. Thank you for watching.